What's up, y'all geeks? I am back with Femme Fatale's The Taking Collection, along with the May Fiend of the Month and Color of the Month polishes to show you guys. This collection was inspired by the first Dean Koontz novel and the overall vibes of this permeating feel of unease through the whole way through. So let's dive right into the swatches. First up is Falling Moon. This is described as a sheer black jelly base, which suspends charcoal holographic glitters, rich purple holographic micro glitters, holographic flicks, and the softest purple sheen. So this has a very rich, dense feeling on application. It's got quite a bit of more of a jelly sort of feel to how it applies. Now, this is uh, quite heavy in terms of your brush strokes. So go in lightly on this one as uh, you can have just a touch of dragging if you are uh, too heavy on how you're applying. Now, for the most part, I had perfect opacity at two coats. Again, just be careful on those brush strokes. And this dries down quite harsh and matte, if you will, and quite textured. So I'm strongly going to suggest a glitter smoothing top coat underneath your glossy top coat. Now, when you glossify it like that, as you can see on my full hand shot here, it is very sparkly. So in the sunlight, it'll absolutely have quite a bit of twinkling factor with it. And next is Goblin Knight. This is a murky red toned brown base that gives way to a teal to purple shifting shimmer. Now this one has a lighter feel to the formula. It applies on the somewhat sheer side. So for opacity, I'm gonna suggest three coats on it. Now, as you build it up, the shimmer just kind of takes over everything. I personally am not one for brown polishes, but I really liked the shimmer to this one. It is just very, very strong in person. Now you can see on my coats, it's a slow sort of buildup as again, the formula is on the lighter side. So once you go in for that third coat, you'll see that base color definitely deepen out. It's what I would describe as being more of a warm toned sort of brown. It definitely darkens out. And again, the shimmer here is very, very strong. I really like the combination between that blue effect against that warm brown base. Now at angles, this one easily shifts over to a really nice purpley sort of glowy shimmer effect and uh, definitely going to pop depending on your lighting, especially if you're indoors or in shaded sort of lights. Now this dries down semi-flat, so I think any top coat will be perfectly fine with it. And next is Phantasmagoric Wasteland. This is a rolly yellow based amber filled with red metallic glitters, red, orange, green shifting flakes. Now this one um, is very much a true sort of jelly. So depending on how you wear it, it's definitely going to uh, be different on how the base color appears. So I think some of you may be able to get away with two coats on it, and it's going to be just a touch more of that lighter sort of burnt orange amber shade. But if you wear it at three coats, which you'll see here in just a moment, it um, just deepens out even more. Now, this is definitely what I would describe as uh, one of those prugly sort of polishes. It's quite neutral in my opinion and warm, and I think it's really gonna play up against your skin tone. So if you have medium to deep tones or very warm undertones, I think it's gonna play up against that. Now the flakes in this one are quite shifty. You'll easily see these uh, red to green and orange sort of shifts. This does dry down just a touch textured from the flakes in this. I don't think it's a super issue uh, in terms of needing a glitter smoothing top coat, but uh, it's definitely gonna depend on how heavy you went on those coats. So I went in just a little more ham on my top coat and smoothed everything out. And next is Prints from Another Star. This is a nebulous thermal shifting from a dim magenta when warm to a deep purple toned blue when cold. Within is a smattering of black micro glitters and crystalline iridescent flakes shifting red to copper to green. So this is a very jelly-like, very squishy, and as you build it up, it's gonna give you that uh, juicy jelly sort of appearance when you finish off with a glossy top coat. Now this dries down flat, and uh, which I've, I'm always saying is indicative to thermals, but the glitters and the uh, just smattering, for lack of better words, of the flakes in here might give you just a touch of texture. So again, it's gonna depend on your preference. I did not use a glitter smoother on this one, I did go in just a touch thicker on my glossy top coat. So really going to uh, just depend on how you apply, all that good stuff, and what glossy top coat you're using. 
Now for opacity, I'm going to suggest three coats on it, uh, normal to light as it does build up soft and gentle. But if you also go on to that third coat, it's absolutely going to give you the most glitter payoff. So the iridescent flakes in this are quite strong in person and those matte black glitters are uh, quite dense as you apply as well. So no issues getting those out of the bottle and the thermal effect to this one is quite quite strong so I had no issues getting it to shift for me. The warm state is definitely this magenta sort of color and the uh, cold state is an absolute dark kind of almost indigo sort of color and next is red eyed scavengers. This is a vibrant magenta micro glitter with holographic flame within is a soft copperish glow. This is my favorite in the set. It is so pretty and uh, it definitely applies like a full coverage micro glitter. Now it starts off just a touch sheer but when you wear uh, micro glitters like this, I like to go in for that first coat and just kind of make it a foundation. When it dries down, it's going to dry down quite textured. And when you go in with your subsequent coats afterwards, you can use that texture to kind of build that foundation for your next coats. So for opacity on this one, I'm going to suggest between two and three coats, depending on the length of your nails. So if you have a free edge similar to mine uh, or longer even, then you're probably going to need a third coat. This is so very sparkly in person and uh, it does dry down quite textured and very thirsty. So I'm going to strongly suggest a glitter smoothing top coat underneath your glossy top coat. That way, very similar to uh, Falling Moon, that first one I showed you guys, uh, you'll get the maximum sparkly payoff when you go in and just kind of gloss it up. So this also has quite a bit of a uh, copper sort of shimmery effect too. I think you're mostly going to see that in indoor lighting. And then when you go outside, especially in uh, brighter lights or say in your kitchen lighting, you'll see that very strong glittery effect, really pretty. And next is Silver Downpour. This is a smooth jelly navy blue base that deepens up as it's layered. Suspended within are two sizes of silver metallic glitters like drops of rain catching the light. So this one's really interesting to me. Uh, I do agree. It's got a very smooth, juicy jelly sort of base to it. Very satisfying on the brush strokes. I'm going to suggest going in lightly on your uh, coats just so that you don't get any uh, dragging and you'll get that nice uh, dispersed sort of glittering effect. I do agree with the official description that the glitters are quite reflective. They're these really pretty, uh, delicate sort of sparkly silver appearance, kind of like uh, platinum flakes, uh, if you will. And for opacity, I'm going to suggest between two and three coats. This is really going to depend as well on your free edge for uh, how many coats you need. But as you can see on the second coat, it definitely deepens out. Now this one does have a touch of texture to it. So depending on how thick your glossy top coat is, you might need a glitter smoothing top coat. Um, it doesn't need a lot, just a very thin coat. And next is Twilight Prevails. This is a blue toned purple base, which gives way to a radiant pink glow. Swimming within are holographic flakes and flecks of various sizes, catching the light and twisting this into a lovely shade. I do agree with that official description. This one is very pretty. It's what I would describe as a medium sort of um, purple base, but there is absolutely a blue undertone happening here too. There's quite a bit of a holographic effect and the shimmer is very strong. Now this has more of a crelly sort of formula to it. So there's just a touch of a squish factor, but it applies quite dense on the nail. For opacity, I'm going to suggest two coats on this one. Um, again, if you have longer nails than what I've got in the video here, you might need a third coat, but this does build very quickly on the nail. Now it does dry down quite flat. So again, you're seeing a glossy top coat on my full hand shot. And next is Wings in the Walls. This is a smoky washed out green base that gives way to a dusky pink glow that shifts to gold and at angles in the light. This is also accented with soft holographic flame. So I do agree, this is um, quite holographic. It's one of those more softer types. So it's not like full blown linear hollow action, but it's still quite dense on your coats. So um, I do agree, the uh, base color is this murky sort of muddied green, if you will, but the shimmer also complements it really well. So as you build it up, it's gonna be this very strong, deep purple sort of shimmery effect. So for opacity, I'm gonna suggest between two and three coats, depending on how you polish. This is another one, 
unlike the previous one I showed you guys that uh, builds up quite quickly. Now it also dries down flat, but not textured. So uh, I think any type of glossy top coat will be perfect for it. And next is the color of the month. This is Celestite, described as a sheer blue tinted base filled with assorted holographic glitters in silver and blue. This also has luminous white golden shimmers and iridescent glitters. This is part of the uh, donation series for this year and $2 of every bottle for direct sales will be donated to the Everyman Foundation. I'll have more information on that in the description box. Now, in our PR information for Celesti, it did say that uh, it's unlikely to be built up to opacity um, without the sponging method, but I wore it at two coats and I thought it was beautiful. So I absolutely can wear this one as a topper at one coat over a undie of some type, but your girl's extra and I loved the sparkle on this one. It's very strong and just so lovely. Now this does dry down texture, so you're gonna wanna use a glitter smoothing top coat underneath your glossy top coat. And next is the Fiend of the Month. This is Wild Mustard, described as a grassy green curly base filled with neon yellow matte glitters in assorted sizes. So this has a uh, curly sort of feel to me, but I think it does lean just a touch more on the jelly side. So uh, for opacity, I think three coats is going to be perfect on it. It has a really nice, very smooth sort of feel as you're applying. And uh, once you go on with that first coat as a foundation, the second and third coat, if you choose to take it up to three, definitely build very easily. Now I had no issues getting a nice smattering of those glitters uh, onto my nails and making it a nice dense sort of appearance. This one also has a soft sort of texture and how it dries down. So depending on the thickness of your glossy top coat, you might need a glitter smoothing top coat for this one. It's not so incredibly thirsty given the smoothness of the base, but I think between that second and third coat, it's gonna give you guys an idea of whether or not your top coat can handle that. So I personally had a very, very thin coat of my glitter smoothing top coat underneath my glossy top coat and it kind of smoothed everything out perfectly. Now these new releases will launch on Femme Fatale's website starting May 1st at 9 a.m. Australian time until May 5th at 9 p.m. Australian time. Uh, these will be going to stockists and uh, ones such as butometry and such, uh, but the Fiend of the Month will not be going to stockists. There are instructions for uh, being a Femme Fatale Fiend member in the Facebook group, so I will link that below for you guys. If you haven't done so already, uh, you can have rewards built up on your account, all that good stuff, and it's absolutely free. Now, I'll also link you guys to Femme Fatale's site if you want to check out other things that are there. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.